How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're in a battle versus BAM in the Smogon Overuse tier. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, BAM. So they're going to lead off with Lady Kai, the pre-marina as I led off with my Iron Treads. I led with Iron Treads just because it's like, it, you know, the Clods Eye, the Registeel, um, to an extent the pre-marina because it's weak to physical attacks. Um, I wanted to get my Stealth Rocks up, but I'm not going to be able to do that against the Prima Marina anyway. So I'm going to go for a Volt Switch straight away just to get a bit of Switch initiative on them. We could be Supercell Slam for there, you know. So I'm surprised they even stayed in there because we could have Supercell Slammed them. Um, if Potentially. Potentially. I don't think it would have even KO'd, but, you know, it'd still be, you know, mad damage against Prima Marina. So anyway, um, let's switch out into our Vaporeon. Vaporeon can take any hit from this Prima Marina, no problem. So there we go. Vaporeon comes in. They go for a Hyper Voice, which is going to... Mmm, delicious, nutritious. We're just going to absorb that. So, that's great and all. Let's go for a flip turn. We shouldn't be outspeeding. Well, they withdraw anyway because they can't really touch us. They're probably specs by the way they've done that. So, Hanzo the S comes in and that's going to be the Clodzire. Is that water absorb? We'll find out in a second. It's an unaware one, so that's good to note. As flip turn does a nice bit of chip damage to the Clod. And we can just bring Iron Treads back in, no problem. And we can go for a Stealth Rocks of our own. Or we can go for an EQ. They can't touch Iron Treads because their only attacking move will be Earthquake. And even if they had a second one, it'd be Poison Jab. Um, unless they're all out offensive and they've got like Terra Blast Fighting or something like that. Daft. But I don't think they will. Um, I think if anything, they go into either Rillaboom here or Pre Marina once again. So I'm going to definitely get those Stealth Rocks up. Um, they probably go into the Great Tusk, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go ahead and go for a Stealth Rock. They withdraw. Are they going to go into the Great Tusk once again? Probably, right? Master Malu. Who's that? Is that the Great Tusk? The Registeel. So the Registeel comes in. We're going to get the Stealth Rock up, which is going to be great. Breaking that multi-scale on the Dragonite is not heavy duty boots. And willing away at their team slowly but steadily, which is always going to be nice. So let's go for a Vault Switch anyway and get on out of here. I, I, I'm predicting them to switch out here um, because Earthquake could come. But I also don't want to get hit by a Body Press and lose my Air Balloon. Not while the um, Clod's Eye is still around. So we Vault Switch. They do stay in. I don't really want to get hit by a uh, Body Press. Um, looking at that damage, I'd say they're probably specially defensive. As the Registeels usually are. Um, so what I go into here, I'm, I'm leaning towards Armor Rouge, but they might Thunder Wave. But I don't think they will. So I'm going to go Armor Rouge, expecting a Body Press. So we'll go Armor Rouge, we'll go Mordor real quick. They go for a Thunder Wave and it misses. So they made the right predict, but they did unfortunately miss. Um, that's kind of a shame. I was hoping for a Body Press so that we could get the weak Armor Speed Boost. That'd be great. Um, but I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking, you know what? Premarine is pretty obvious right now, but they might also stay in to try and tank a hit. So they can go for a Thunder Wave on our um, Armor Rouge. But I don't think we need Armor Rouge to win the game. So I'm going to go for an Armor Cannon. They do withdraw. Are they going to go into the Pre-Marina though? That's the real question. I think they do, right? Lady Kai. That's that's the Pre-Marina. So Lady Kai comes in. Nice and shiny. Got all of it. Um, gets hurt by the Stealth Frogs, which is great. We go for a Armor Cannon. And it's going to bounce right off it. But it's still going to do a bit of chip. And we get a bit of chip. Not too bad. And that's definitely not Assault Vest. It's definitely Choice Specs, I'd say. Um, so I don't think they'll expect this next move, which is going to be Energy Ball, which should KO from here. And I was I was going to say, I, I don't think they'll go for a Hyper Voice. I think if anything, they would have gone for a Flip Turn or something. They're not Flip Turn because they're probably going to expect the Vaporeon to come in. So they actually go into Great Tusk expecting maybe the, you know, the Vaporeon to come in or something so they can get a Rapid Spin off. But we actually went for the Energy Ball, which may KO the Great Tusk right now. So let's see what they do. They go, we go for the Energy Ball. Let's see if it KOs. Depends if they've got health investment. They must have health investment because it doesn't KO. Um, if they do have health investment, that means we can, in fact, KO it this next turn. But I'm I'm leaning towards them going for a rapid spin. So I kind of want to go for another energy ball. Or an expanding force. Let's go for an expanding force. Um, there we go. We are speed. So that's great. Expanding force takes out the Great Tusk. The Stealth Rocks up, are up, up to stay pretty much. So Great Tusk goes down. Off to a really good start right now. Which is fantastic. In comes Gaia, which is going to be what? The Dragonite. So Dragonite comes in. That thing is a threat. It's not heavy duty boots, which is good. Um, we can go for an expanding force here. They probably want to take us out straight away. Or they probably go for a Dragon Dance. I can't let them go for a Dragon Dance. So I'm going to go for an expanding force. We do outspeed, which is great. So they're probably adamant. Expanding force does a little bit of damage. They go for the Dragon Dance. So that is terrifying, to say the least. Um, that is definitely terrifying, to say the least. However, it's not the end of the world. What we can do is we can go for the um, Ndidi switch. So I'm going to go for the Ndidi switch here just to block the uh, extreme speed that could be coming our way. 
It depends whether they've got Earthquake on. If they've got Earthquake, it'll take out the Indeedee right now. If it doesn't have Earthquake, we might be alright. So let's get the Psychic Surge up first and foremost. Block that Extreme Speed. Which they do in fact go for the Earthquake, which may take us out to plus one. It doesn't. Okay, so Indeedee's still around, so that's good. Um, so what we can do here is we can go Iron Treads, and we can go for a Volt Switch or a Rapid Spin or something along those lines. I'm also leaning towards if they're going to go for an Earthquake, I should go into the Sceptile and go for an Acrobatics. That's also an option for us. Um, I think I will do that. I will go with a Sceptile Switch here because we can take an Earthquake, no problem. And they kind of have to go for an Earthquake here to take us out because, well, Earthquake hits everything, really. Um, if they go for a Dragon Claw here, then we're kind of boned. But I'm pretty sure we can take a Dragon Claw, right? They go for another Dragon Ant, so they're at plus two speed. However... They still get outsped by Unburden Sceptile. So we don't have to worry about extreme speed because of the psychic terrain. Let's KO this thing with an acrobatics. Hopefully it KOs them. Hopefully it KOs them. There we go. Acrobatics comes through. Oh, they. I, this is another situation where I should have terrored as the Dragon Rush takes our Sceptile. So once again, Sceptile, I'm so sorry. Oh, I should have terrored there. I should have terrored there big time. So they've got Dragon Rush, probably E Speed, and Earthquake. I think our best bet here is Iron Treads. Because it's got the air balloon. So it can definitely take a dragon rush. That's for sure. That's so unfortunate for Sceptile. Once again, I failed it. That was a terrible play. I should have, I should have Terra Flying. Should have Terra Flying. But it's fine. Um, let's go for a rapid spin. Because again, they have to go for a dragon rush to break our air balloon. Which isn't going to KO us. It may flinch us. Air balloon pops. We don't, we don't flinch. Which is great. We go for the rapid spin. We get a nice little speed boost. And then that takes out the Dragonite. So Dragonite is not a threat anymore. I should have terrored with Sceptile. I keep, I keep going on about it, but it's like Sceptile could be really good if we could pull it off. And I just keep forgetting that it's attack stat. It's like base 80. In comes Caesar, the reliable partner. What's that going to be? The Rillaboom. Gets rid of the psychic terrain. Gets up its grassy terrain. Pointing stones do dig in. We are faster, even if they're Scarfed, which they wouldn't be Scarfed anyway with Grassy Glide. Um, Do we go for a Volt Switch? Or do we... Ex hmm. I think we go for a Volt Switch... Just purely for the fact that they, yeah, they, they probably go for like a U-turn or something here. So I don't think they go for a grassy glider. I think they may go for a wood hammer or they go for a U-turn. It's one of the two. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make a ballsy play. I'm going to go armor rouge because I'm, I'm wanting them to go for a wood hammer or a U-turn. And then they can activate our weak armor, which would be cool. So they go for a knockoff, which is unfortunately going to KO us because they're definitely banded. As Armour Rouge goes down. So that's a good play by Bam going for the knockoff there. Maybe I should have expected that. Maybe I should have. Uh, I don't know. Um, either way. Either way. We're in a bit of a pickle right now. We are in a bit of a pickle. We've still got a Terra. We could go Indeedee. Indeedee could do some stuff here. Um, they would probably just go straight into Registeel if we did that though. So what do we do um, against that Registeel? That Registeel's a problem. That Registeel is a problem. I think we go into our Indeedee. Like so. Because nothing on their team wants to switch into an Expanding Force except from the Registeel, right? We know this Relic Room is probably going to go for... Uh, I say we go for an Expanding Force, personally. So they withdraw. Are they going to go Registeel or are they going to go the Claude or the Primarina? They're going to go into Master Malu, which is the Registeel, I think. Yeah, the Registeel comes in. Nice and shiny, gotta love it. Get some Stealth Rock Chip. The Expanding Force is going to bounce right off it, but we got some nice little bit of chip damage off on it, which is always nice. So um, they can just go for a Body Press right now, and that'll definitely take us out. Um, I do want to keep my Indeedee around to get rid of that Grassy Terrain again. So I think what I do here is I go into my Vaporeon. 100% of the time I'm going to Vaporeon, and we go for a Scold, because Scold could potentially burn the Rillaboom, which would be amazing. Um, it can do some decent damage to the Clodzire. Marine is on death's door anyway. They go for a Thunder Wave on the Vaporeon, which is a good play. But it's kind of bad because now our flip turn is going to be um, slower. So we can get a slow flip turn off. But what I'm going to do instead, is I'm going to go for a Scald. 100% going for a Scald here. What's crazy is that indeed he actually goes pretty hard here. So let's go for a Wish real quick. They do withdraw. Are they going to go into the Rillaboom risking the Scald? Caesar comes in. That is the Rillaboom for, for sure. For sure. So the Rillaboom comes in. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great. They get the Grassy Terrain up. Grassy Surge comes through. And then we go for a Wish. Like so. And what do we go into now? Because they, they probably go for the attack. 
They probably go for the attacks. I think we should probably go into our Hydreigon. They'll expect a Fire Blast and they'll probably go into Pre-Marina. I think if we're going to Terra anything, it's going to be Terra Hydreigon. So I am going to go Hydreigon right now. I will try and wish an Ndidi later, but not now. Um, as Melissa Efton comes in, the Hydreigon. I'm, I'm expecting a Grassy Glide here, to be honest with you. U-turn. That's going to KO my Hydreigon, isn't it? Not quite, but it's nearly there. So let's see what they go and do. Are they going to go with the Registeel play? Or are they going to go with the Pre-Marina play? I'm hoping for the Pre-Marina, to be honest with you. Master Malu comes in. That is the Registeel. So they must... They're not worried about the Fire Blast, that's for sure. They are definitely not worried about no Fire Blasts. We get some recovery from the um, the Wish, which is nice. Um, so Hydreigon's still in the game. But we need to get rid of this Registeel somehow. This Registeel is just really hard to take care of for now. That I've lost Sceptile and Arm Rouge. Um, it's going to be really hard to take care of. So let's go for a U-turn first and foremost. We're not going to Terra now, of course. They withdraw. So they make a double. They're expecting the, 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 the Fire Blast. And they go into Lady Kai. So that's fine. Lady Kai comes in. Get some Stealth Rock Chip. Then it's also going to get some U-turn Chip, which is nice. Nearly takes them out. But they have got the Grassy Terrain Recovery the next turn. So we'll get Hydreigon out of there. And uh, now we'll go into... I'm leaning towards... Vaporeon again. Because I do I do want to heal up Ndidi somehow. By getting a Wish off. So I'm going to go for that. Wish. And then... Flip turn. I'm going to go for the Wish and then Flip turn. So they go for a Calm Mind. Which is terrifying. But also quite bizarre. Why do you need a Calm Mind when you're on Death's Door? That's the real question. Um, so we go for a Wish. There we go. And we're going to flip turn into our Ndidi to get rid of the grassy terrain. So we'll flip turn into Ndidi real quick. They go for a Moonblast. It's going to sting a little bit, but it won't take us out. It does about half. Low is our special attack. Are we fully paralyzed? We are. Which means we do get a, a Wish recovery. But unfortunately, it's not what we needed. <laughs> That's very unfortunate. So... Reggie still doesn't have any recovery. It's taking Stealth Rock damage upon switching every single time, and it's taking expanding force. I, I, I think the I think we win with Indeedy, but we do need to. Um, the grass disappeared, which is great, absolutely great. Let's go for another wish. Let's go for a flip turn because we're not going to be able to. We're not going to be able to wish because that Moonblast is doing too much damage. So they go for another Moonblast. It's going to sting. Does over half. Are we going to get fully paralyzed? Yep. That's not good. That is not good at all. Um, you can probably feel the rage bubbling up inside right now. <laughs> um, which is really unfortunate for us. So what I'm going to do here is, um, based on the flip turn, the wish, based on the damage they did with the Moonblast, I'm going to have to switch out into Iron Treads and just Earthquake, pretty much. Um, the only problem is that invites in the Rillaboom. That's the real problem we've got. So do I go into Indeedee or do I just let Vaporeon go down? I think I have to let Vaporeon go down by going for a flip turn. They go for a Moonblast. That's going to take us out. The paralyzing just like really got to us this game, unfortunately. Um, but it is, it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, now we can, they only got one car mined up, so we can take them out with an expanding force. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. It does bait in the Registeel a bit, but it's chip damage against the Registeel, which is great. So we get that Psychic Surge up. And they're probably thinking they can take an expanding force, but I don't think they can after one car mined. So I'm going to go for that Expanding Force. They they do stay in thinking they can take it. Can they take it? No, they can't. No way, Jose. Pre-Marina goes down, which is amazing. So that's one less threat for us to deal with. However, they can bring the Rillaboom in right now. And that'll take care of my Ndidi, no problem. Caesar comes in, the reliable partner. They probably go for a U-turn here. And then go into Registeel. They get that Grassy Surge up, which is going to get rid of our Psychic Terrain. And then we just switch out. So we have to go... I'm going to go into the Iron Treads. I don't think they'll expect Iron Treads. I think, if anything, they expect the um, Hydreigon to come in. And I think they're banded. So I'm sure we can take a Drain Punch non-stab from them if they do go for a Drain Punch. I'm pretty confident we can take a Drain Punch. So Hot Wheel comes in. And they do, in fact, Terror, which is terrifying. Let's see what they Terra into real quick. They're going to go for a Terra Grass. So they are going for it. They're probably going for a Grassy Glide. I reckon Rillaboom finishes off our team from here. <laughs> Not going to lie. Not going to lie. Um, they go for the Grassy Glide. That is definitely going to take us out. 
There we go. So Iron Treads goes down. So our, one of our main ways of taking out the Clods Iron and the Registeel is gone. Which is really unfortunate for us. Very unfortunate for us. So what do we do here? If Clods Iron doesn't have Toxic, which it probably does, it, we can't touch Hydreigon. We have to go into Indeedy. We have to go into Indeedy and get rid of this grassy terrain for a start. They probably go Registeel. But there isn't really much else I can do about that, to be honest with you. I, all I can do is hope they stay in here. So I'm going to go for the Expanding Force. They withdraw, which is fine. They withdraw, which is fine. And they go Master Malu, which is the Registeel. Let's see how much damage they take from an Expanding Force. Let's just see how much damage they take. So... It didn't do much last time. It won't do much this time. But I want to see if we've lowered it enough for Hydreigon. I wouldn't say so. I'd say they probably go for a Thunder Wave, though, to try and catch the Hydreigon. Probably. So let's go for the Expanding Force once again. And that should take them down to the range where Hydreigon can come in. I think. I, I don't know. That's a resisted hit. They go for a Body Press. They, they, they just had no no Fs given. <laughs> um, so what we can do here is that we can Terra. Hydreigon might be able to pull us back a little bit if we Terra. Because we'll be Terra Poison, so we won't be weak to the body press. So let's go for it. Maleficent comes in. And we're also resistant to Grassy Glide. Normally. And with Terra. So we don't lose anything from Terroring. Um, so we've got to go for Dark Pulse. So let's go for the Dark Pulse. They can't Toxic Stall us and they can't Earthquake us with Clod Zyre because of the Terra Poison. So I think I think if we can flinch a lot here, we could actually win this with Hydreigon. We could pull this back. We could pull this back um, with Hydreigon. So let's see if it does the job. And then we go for the Dark Pulse. There we go. Thunder Wave and they missed. <gasps> oh, our luck's beginning to change. Our luck is beginning to change. So Registeel is going to go down the next turn to a Dark Pulse. Which is great. So let's go for the Dark Pulse. Like so. Dark Pulse comes through. Registeel goes down. We've got two minutes left. Can we do this in two minutes? Let's see. Because that Clod's Eye can't, can't Toxic us. It can't Earthquake us. Poison Jab will bounce right off. Hanzo comes in. That's the Clod's Eye. All they can really do at this point is uh, stall us out. Stall out the timer with Clod's Eye. Which if they do, then it's fair enough. That's a legitimate tactic. But like... <laughs> Please don't. Please let me give me a chance. So they go for a Protect, and they took their time picking Protect. Clearly so they could time a stall, which is like, whatever. If you're going to do that, that's fine. Just know, though, in theory, Mons, there is a good chance we win this outside of the timer. So, you know, we could Dark Pulse them to death, which we're not going to be able to do because they're going to time a stall. Dark Pulse comes through. No damage. But they flinched. See, this is what I mean. We could actually win this because of the flinches. But they just go for a protect this next turn to get leftovers recovery and to also just for the, the, the time. So anyway, that's GG Bam. That was a fun one. Um, it was a really good, really good game. It came down to it. And um, they let us go for it. They go for a recover, obviously. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> we probably do lose this because I think we lose PP on Dark Pools before anything else. So that's like fine, whatever. Um, but that is going to be the game. So GG Bam, that was a fun one. And we have ourselves a bonus battle. And today the bonus battle is a monotype battle. Dragon versus Water against Cody from the Discord server. Stick around till the end for a rental code for the Sceptile team. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Cody. And as usual, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more daily Pokemon Wi-Fi battles like this one, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out. They lead off with Samurai, we lead off with our Garchomp. I just wanted to get the Stealth Rocks up because I can see there being a lot of Flip Turn, Volt Turn, stuff like that. Um, so Stealth Rocks are going to be really important. Plus we get some nice damage off on the Samurai. We break a Focus Ash potentially with the Rough Skin. Um, they do withdraw though and they go into Rotom, which is an interesting one. So Rotom probably wants to burn us or something. So I'm going to go for the Stealth Rocks once again. There we go, Stealth Rocks comes through. And then I'll probably go for the Spikes. I think Spikes are going to be important in this game. I don't really mind Garchomp being burned. So I'm going to go for the Spikes real quick. Spikes comes through. It looks like they are a defensive Rotom, not a Scarf one with Trick. As um, they probably go for the Burn now, right? Um, they go for the Will-O-Wisp, which doesn't miss, which is nice. I'm, I'm glad when there's no hacks, again, especially with Cody. Because me and Cody always have legendary battles. And it's only ever like a non-legendary battle when like some serious hacks happens. And like it's either really hacksy or there's no hacks at all. There's never any in between. 
So anyway, let's go for another layer of spikes. We may as well get them all up because they don't have a defogger or a rapid spinner. Um, which is great. And you know what's funny? Cody never brings a hazard glare against me. And I don't know why. <laughs> they go for the pump, though. That's going to sting Garchomp a little bit. Not too much. We can live another one. Um, and what we can do is we can go for another layer of spikes now and get all three layers up, which is absolutely fantastic, giving us a really big advantage right now. So Garchomp is a goat for this. We get all the hazards up. They go for a pump. They don't miss the pump, which is nice. And that's going to nearly take us out. I think Burn takes us out. No, it doesn't actually, does it? Yeah, 1 HP. 1 HP. So we've got a chance. If they miss the Hydra Pump, we go for a Dragon Tail and we, we shuffle a bit and get some Stealth Rocker and Spikes Chip. They go for the Pump. They don't miss, which is great. <laughs> this is what I mean. With Cody, there's either no hacks at all or there's all the hacks. You know, it's one of the two. And I'm just glad this looks like one of the games that's like no hacks at all. So... Um, I definitely don't want to go into anything that's going to care about the burn. So I think I'm going to go into my Dragalgi. Kelp me over here. Because it not only walls the Rotom, it doesn't care about burn. And it can fire off a really powerful Sludge Wave right now, which is going to hurt anything on that team. So I'm going to go for the Sludge Wave like so. And uh, one little remember re thing to remember about Monotype is that there is no Terra. Now that's Terra. And some Pokemon like Fluttermane are allowed. Not that that matters for this game. So they go for a Discharge, that's fair enough, that's going to do a no damage really. And um, they haven't really got a good switch into a Sludge Wave to be fair, so I think they're just letting Rotom go down here. As we do get the Poison, which is nice with the Sludge Wave, that's that's great. And that's definitely a specially defensive Rotom, that's for sure, because that Sludge Wave did like no damage, and that's like adaptability. So, you know, and they are leftovers as well, which is good to know. So, um, also what's great with this matchup is that we're Dragon, so that means that their Rain Wave Crash spam. Isn't really going to affect us too much. The only thing we've got to watch out for is that Kingdra and um, Ice Fangs on the Barrascuda. And obviously the Pre-Marina being a Fairy type. So let's go for a Sludge Wave once again. And um, they go for a Pain Split, which is really unfortunate because it's going to give them some health back. But this Sludge Wave, you know, it's still not doing enough. So let's go for a Sludge Wave again. Nearly, nearly takes them out, which is great. So even if they go for a Pain Split the next turn, it's not going to recover their health enough to the point where they can, you know, well, where we have to worry really. So... Um, that's great. So let's go for another Sludge Wave. Pain Split comes through. Recovers their health back to about half. But Sludge Wave will KO from here. I think. It does, yet. Yeah. Rotom goes down, so that's great. So with Rotom out of the way, we do need Dragalgy around for the Pre-Marina. That's for sure. So we definitely want to keep it around. That's for sure. They go into Samurott. Samurott's going to be able to hit us on a physical side, which is unfortunate. It'll probably be able to go for a Ceaseless Edge. Um, they get hit by the Stealth Rocks and Spikes, though, which is great. And now we can go stay. I, I, I could. Hmm. I think Gudra is the way to go. So I'm going to go Gudra. Gudra is an important Pokemon in this game because its Iron Defense set is going to be really useful. Um, the problem we've got is. Well, we could, we're not really much of a problem. They go for a Ceaseless Edge. It's going to do a bit of damage. We get the Gooey, which is great. Meaning that we probably outspeed this next turn. They get the Spikes up thanks to the Ceaseless Edge. And, like, I want to go for a body press, but they probably... Mm, they might switch out. That's the problem we've got. Or they might go for another Ceaseless Edge. I think I go for a body press here 100% of the time. We do outspeed because of the, uh, the GUI, but it's not enough to get the KO, which is unfortunate. As they go for a Sacred Sword, which does KO us. So that's unfortunate. Um, GUI is going to make them really slow, though. So we can go into pretty much whatever we want to finish off this Samurai. But losing Gudra there, probably not the best idea in the world for us. But, you know, at the same time, it's like whatever. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my good old reliable Raging Bolt right now. Who isn't going to be affected by the spikes because of the air balloon. I know for a fact that we outspeed this um, Samurott. So I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt right now just in case they switch out. Although they really don't have a switch in so it, it's whatever. So Thunderbolt comes through. Raging Bolt's going to be one of the biggest players this game. There was a crit and luckily that was a crit that did not matter. So even though there is a little bit of hacks this game, it's um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> in comes the Pelipper. So the Pelipper comes in. Now, they're probably going to expect a Thunderclap. Um, just to get rid of that Pelipper real quick. So they probably make the ballsy play of switching out um, into Kingdra, I would say. Kingdra would definitely help them here. So instead of going for a Thunderbolt, I'm going to drop a Draco. Um, we drop the Draco. We do outspeed them. That's going to KO the Pelipper, and unfortunately, they did stay in, so that is that is an unfortunate turn of events. Um, because it means that Kingdra does get a free switch in, and it means it gets to go for an Outrage if it wants to, which can KO our entire team. 
right now. So Kingdra comes in. This thing's scary in the rain, that's for sure. Uh, it's nice and shiny, gotta love it. Get some nice chip damage on it, which is great. The spikes and stealth rocks. Um, we probably see a Dragon Pulse or a Draco Meteor or an Outrage. So we're going to have to sack something off. And to be honest with you, I'm leaning towards Dragology because it's not living much from a pre-marina anyway um, at that low HP. So I may as well just let it go down to whatever the uh, Kingdra decides to go for. There we go. As uh, they decide to go for what exactly? Oh, we get hit by spikes, obviously. Draco Meteor. So that's good. That means that we get to switch in on this thing with its lowered HP, which is fantastic. So Kingdra is going to take out Dragology. And uh, what we can do here is we could go into Dragapult, because Dragapult can definitely live, or we can Dragon Dance with the QRM. The problem we got there is that the uh, Barrascuda is a problem. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with the QRM play. I think QRM is a good play. However, it does bait in the, the Pre Marina. That's the problem we've got. So um, they could easily go for a flip turn here into the Pre Marina, or they could go for a hard switch into Pre Marina. If they hard switch, we're kind of boned. I'm going to go for a sub. Um, they do actually drop a Draco straight up, which isn't going to KO us. It, luckily, it doesn't take us down low enough to the point where we can, you know, not make a substitute. But it's just barely. We're barely able to make a substitute with that. So now, we 100% go for a scale shot because they probably try and break the substitute with the Draco. They do, which is fine. Hopefully, we don't miss the scale shot. That'd be ideal. Because if we miss the scale shot, we are very boned against this Kingdra. But if we can actually KO this Kingdra right here, it's the one big crowd of the way. So scale shot does come through and it does KO the Kingdra after two hits, I think. Yep, two hits, which is great. Kyurem takes out the Kingdra. And now we've got a nice little speed boost um, and defense lowering. The defense lowering is the bad part. The, the, the speed boost is great. The speed boost is great. But we still get outsped by uh, the Barrascuda. But well, they bring Pre-Marina in because they probably realize we can't touch it. Which, you know, we can't. But the stones and spikes are going to dig in. And we should be able to get some nice little bit of chip damage off with the Icicle Spear. So I'm going to go for said Icicle Spear. And that should do a nice bit of chip damage to the Pre-Marina. So Icicle Spear comes through. There's one. It doesn't do much. But the, the combined power of four of them is doing enough. You know? And if we hit five, that's even better. We do hit five, which is nice. Takes them down to red. That's great. So we hit it five times. Kyurem is coming in clutch. They go for a Moonblast though. That's going to definitely KO us. So Kyurem goes down. But it's not the end of the world because at the end of the day, we have the Raging Bolt in the back. And Raging Bolt's such a big contender for like MVP right now. So we'll go into a Raging Bolt, the net game. Like so. We float in the air, so we're not bothered about no spikes. We don't outspeed, I don't think. I'm going to go for the Thunderclap just in case we don't outspeed. But there's, there's the Thunderclap come through. Pre-Marina goes down. And I think we just won that game. Because there's no way Barrascuda has, like, Substitute or something, right? There's just no way. There's no way whatsoever, right? Barrascuda comes in. What can Barrascuda do to us? It's nice and shiny. Gotta love it. I, ju I just think we, we Thunderclap. We definitely Thunderclap. There we go. Thunderclap comes through. They must have all attacking moves. Barrascuda goes down. And that is going to be the game. So, GG Cody. That was a really fun Monotype battle. This is the last time I'm using this Mono Dragon team. So, the next Monotype battle you see will be a different team. Uh, what type I'm going with, I'm not sure yet, but I guess you'll have to just find out. But as always, here is the rental code for the Sceptile team. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.